Hey, Remote Pilot 101, Jason here. I wanted to take a moment to talk a little bit about special use airspace. Now, you're not only gonna hear about special use airspace on the Part 107 Knowledge Test, you're gonna interact and see special use airspace in your day-to-day real-world operations. Now, to help you remember the types of special use airspace, we developed, albeit a little bit of a silly acronym, that acronym is MCPRON. Sounds like a really bad uh, McDonald's sandwich from New Orleans. Mick, prawn, bad joke. No offense to New Orleans by any means. That's the only place I've ever seen prawns before though. So that's how I know that. Um, let's dive through this McPrawn acronym. The M in it stands for Military Operations Area. I have my iPad open with an app called ForeFlight that we use a lot in manned aviation. The M is for a military operations area. A military operations area is shown, you see this, the Palatka 1, M-O-A. It's shown with these magenta hash marks that you can see there, all right? That is where the military does their training. Can you fly in a military operations area? Yes, assuming it's not um, any other type of airspace within a delta or anything like that. You can, you should exercise extreme caution though. The C in this MCPRON acronym is for a controlled firing area. Typically a controlled firing area is not actually depicted on a sectional chart. Florida has one of the few that is. If you look with me here, do you see this uh, grayish hash mark there? And then this grayish hash mark right over where it says drag strip and stacks and you can see that there. Let me zoom out now. Do you see how the gray, that same gray area goes from the ocean out over here, all the way across into the Atlantic Ocean. This is a controlled firing area, cannot make this up, where they literally shoot uh, missiles across the Florida Peninsula. In manned aviation, it's a little more dangerous. Uh, they give you the altitudes here, you can see from 3,000 to 5,000 feet. Typically, missiles could be flying through there, no big deal, right? Flying a drone, you don't have to worry about getting shot down by a missile too much, but when you dive into manned aviation one day, you need to know <laughs> about that, right? The P in MCPRON is for a prohibited area. Absolutely no chance you are getting into a prohibited area. Here's one. This is, uh, I believe this is a submarine base. I'm just north of Jacksonville a little bit. My military folks will know that a bit better. Um, P-50. You can see P-50, it is shown with these blue hash marks. I think it's a nuclear submarine base. I think so. Um, I should know better. I lived in Jacksonville for a little bit, but it's a blue hash mark. Absolutely no chance you are getting uh, into there. The R in MCPRON is for a restricted area. Let's go back down to where we saw that Palatka MOA. Within MOAs, you will also find these guys. Again, back to cool you know, shooting stuff. This is actually our bombing range. You can hear the bombing range sometimes. Restricted area 2906. That's why it's a perfect circle because it's our bombing range. It's a restricted area. It's also blue hash marks. Can you fly in a restricted area? Maybe. It depends. Is it hot? I mean, is it being used? Is it active? Or is it cold or inactive? We find that out by contacting the controlling agency. That could be the flight service station or somewhere along that lines. They'd have that information for you. Okay, so MCPRON, the A in MCPRON, is an alert area. And let's head way on down to South Florida, I know of one. In alert area. Where is it? Here it is. In alert area. An alert area is just to let you know of... Uh, perhaps an unusual activity, uh, a high, in this case, a concentrated flight training area. Look at all these airports we have in South Florida. All these airports have flight schools and all these flight schools come on out here to use the Everglades as their practice area. There's another one up here. This is just saying hey, there's a lot of aircraft doing a lot of training maneuvers, civilian aircraft typically, just use caution out in this area. Can you fly in an alert area? Yes, you can. Um, okay, so we went through uh, MIC, P-R-A, um, um, W-N is what we need next here. I'm trying, I, I can't see the beautiful MCPRON acronym like you can, so I'm remembering here. W is our warning area. Warning areas, we have to come off the coast to see our warning areas. And this is essentially our warning area that you can see here. Look, 
Here is a warning area shown here. And this is warning area 497 uh, alpha. And what this is essentially warning you of is just it's a low control zone, meaning Listen, ATC radar may not make it out this far. It's warning manned pilots that, hey, there could be some, you know, low flying aircraft here. It even says it here, South Florida low control area. It's just spelling it out for you there. Okay, lastly in McPron, we have the N, which is a national security TFR. And we actually have what we would call a it's a permanent TFR, um, but it's shown right here over Disney World, a permanent temporary flight restriction, if that's not an oxymoron, uh, something like Disney World. Um, at the time of this recording, uh, what's this going to end up? This is going to end up being a TFR here for a launch, it looks like. Uh, you see that? We also had one at the time of this recording. Uh, they had one over for the hurricane. It doesn't look like it now. That might have uh, that might have closed out a little bit, but when the hurricane went through, because it was a disaster area, they had a TFR. I don't see any other TFRs. Oh, here's one Warner Robins kind of area. This is one that's going to be popping up, so you can kind of see those TFRs there. Special use airspace. By the way, no chance you're flying on a TFR. By the way, despite what you see on the news of all these stray Mavics just flying into baseball games, that is very much illegal. McPron is your acronym. Special use airspace is what it helps you remember. What you really need to remember is which can I fly and which can I not fly, and that's going to prove most important. Remote Pilot 101, I just want to thank you for all that you do. Any questions, any comments, please don't hesitate to leave us a comment below this video. Also, please don't forget to uh, subscribe or like Remote Pilot 101, and most importantly, give this a share because I don't worry about you knowing everything. It's every other drone pilot we want to make safe, right? It's like your mother always said. I'm not worried about you learning to drive, Jason, or drive on the road. I'm worried about everybody else. Well, I'll give you the same advice. I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about everybody else out there. We don't need any more airspace violations giving us who follow the rules a bad name. So give this video a share on Facebook, on YouTube as well, just so we continue to spread the word. And most importantly, this is a community that takes care of one another. This is a community that educates. So thank you for that and have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see y'all.